Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny will reveal, to no one's surprise, increasing indifference for the character's depiction since the 1980s. It raises a question for my channel. Why is the audience for Star Wars shrinking? From a lengthy list, I'll outline four major reasons in this video. How does my list compare to the list in your head? Let's find out. Welcome to Galactic Initiative, I'm your host Jeff. Before I share my list, allow me to address those who would challenge my premise. Yes, the audience for Star Wars is shrinking. No amount of feelings and fabrication should distract from data. I wish circumstances were different. I recall the height of Star Wars popularity. Fans were everywhere, freely exchanging their thoughts. Sales were unprecedented. Now, not so much. Tickets, subscriptions, and merchandise all slipping. The access media frequently defends Disney by misleading readers and viewers. Their quote-unquote reporters love to tout opening weekend gross revenue and streamed minutes of premiere episodes. Rarely, if ever, do they provide context, or revisit a project once its theater engagement or season concludes. If you examine the numbers yourself, you will find an obvious decrease in demand, illustrated by leftward or downward shifts of market demand curves. I'll speak more about the access media later. Numbers aside, consider your environment. How many Star Wars shirts do you see? How large is the Star Wars toy section at your local brick and mortar? How many collectors do you know? How many people discuss Star Wars? Who's your favorite character? What's your favorite movie? Etc. Okay, naysayers addressed. Let's start my list with the least controversial reason for the decline in Star Wars audience. Age. The original trilogy commenced in 1977. The prequel trilogy ended in 2005. Most born in the mid-80s, late aughts, and 20-teens don't have the same lasting affinity for George Lucas's Star Wars as their parents and older siblings. They don't have a deep connection to it because they didn't experience it during their childhoods. Some parents show the adventures to their children. The animated series reach kids who missed the prequel era. Some adults fall in love as they first encounter the IP. So, yes, there are exceptions. But, in general, over time, the fan base has shifted from children and parents to parents and grandparents, who have more discretionary income, but less interest in merchandise, specifically toys. Ah, the limits of nostalgia. A second reason is leadership. I intentionally excluded the sequels and D-plus series when accounting for childhood experiences. Because, thanks to Disney's leaders, including Kathleen Kennedy, the current era doesn't appeal to children like past eras. It hasn't renewed the franchise like the prequels. Some would argue. Once again, if you examine the numbers yourself, you will find low demand for the new films, shows, and merchandise, not to mention Galaxy's Edge. Peruse a toy aisle and shop for clothing. Unless you visit a discount retailer, you won't find the same footprint today as Old Lang Syne. Try discussing the sequels with an acquaintance. No interest. Why? Kathleen Kennedy isn't an authority on Star Wars, nor is Bob Iger. In fact, the majority of modern Lucasfilm's executives, producers, writers, and directors didn't earn their positions through knowledge of Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Willow, and the rest. They were hired and promoted based on other criteria. Over and over since 2012, we've witnessed mean-spirited, dismissive attitudes toward the properties that sustain the organization. Kathleen Kennedy, Ryan Johnson, Leslie Headland, and Pablo Hidalgo view George Lucas's Star Wars as problematic. They've said so. No secrets about their efforts to change it, presently and retroactively, to suit their sensibilities. Without leaders who grasp and respect the IP, returns will continue to diminish. A third reason for the decline in Star Wars audience is media coverage. The access in access media means exclusive interviews, first looks, swag, and ratings. Members trade positive articles, reviews, and posts for these perks. Those who dare to criticize quickly lose their exclusive status, and parent corporations bought or launched rating sites. Decades ago, studios adopted the axiom, 
Keep your friends close, keep your enemies closer. In short, you can't trust the access media. People started watching Kenobi, and many, many things seemed off. Then, they encountered articles, posts, and videos that lauded it as the greatest series of all time, and preemptively attacked dissenters with ist and phobe labels. Standard operating procedure nowadays. When the products are bad, fair to say more often than not, shills add insult to injury by praising and defending them. But the public has turned against one-sided journalism and turned off Star Wars. $12 to $16 for a movie ticket. $8 to $11 per month for a D-plus subscription, and reviews that consistently lead to disappointment. Yes, the access media hurts Star Wars. Once, objectivity was a virtue. The critics of old, from Jeffrey Lyons to Roger Ebert, provided a baseline whether you agreed or disagreed with them. You could accurately gauge a film's potential based on their recommendations. Now, virtue signaling irritates fans to the point of quitting. D-plus subscriptions have significantly dropped since Kenobi. I know Star Wars doesn't exist in a vacuum, but how many cancellations came from its fans? And how many cancellations were, in part, related to the access media's deceptions and attacks? A fourth reason is universal themes, or lack thereof. George Lucas' Star Wars didn't flirt with gray areas. Good versus evil. Freedom versus authoritarianism. The morals, or lessons, were obvious to all ages and cultures, and attractive for their clarity. Audiences understood the heroes, villains, stakes, and plots. The stories were a conglomeration of world mythologies, nuanced enough to be interesting, simple enough to be understood, especially by children. Which brings me to the Disney era. Lucasfilm's insistence on muddying the waters, from its wishy-washy villains, to its broken heroes, to its incompetent New Republic. Gratuitous complexity. Universal themes forsaken. In addition, a commitment to boutique socio-political ideology is detrimental. As I previously noted, Kathleen Kennedy and her team want to transform Star Wars, to use it as a vehicle for the message. After The Last Jedi, how were viewers supposed to feel? How were kids supposed to feel? Was it a film to bridge ages and cultures? No. And there you have it. Four reasons for Star Wars shrinking audience. This video isn't exhaustive. I could easily turn it into a series. But I'd appreciate your perspective. Leave a comment about these and other reasons. Consider two clicks for like and subscribe. Check out Galactic Initiative for all things Star Wars. Galactic Initiative is not authorized or endorsed by Lucasfilm Limited. The name Star Wars and all related materials are registered trademarks of Lucasfilm Limited, a subsidiary of the Walt Disney Company, Walt Rights Reserve. Galactic Initiative is a registered trademark and other product and company names are trademarks of their respective holdings. Use does not imply affiliation or endorsement.